I am late by eight minutes, but we are here and it is Woke Wednesday and I am, as always, dear friends, exhausted. I will wait for all of you to join. Hi friends, welcome, welcome, welcome. My apologies for being delayed. It is Woke Wednesday and I am excited to jump in. It's wonderful that, you know, Instagram is up and running today so that we can all gather together. How did you all fare with the, you know, shut down, lock off, whatever it was that happened, you know, Zuckerberg's glitch that cost him about $7 billion, give or take. Um, drop an emoji in the comment section and let me know how, what you were doing during the five hour block, blackout of all social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Oculus, WhatsApp. I mean, for the love of fucking God. I know that what I did, I actually got work done. You know, I'm a writer on sometimes, and I was able to actually write and not check my alerts every five seconds, so that was great. Oh, some people didn't notice. Oh my goodness, good for you. You live a full life then, uh, unlike me. Um, oh, you slept? <laughs> Tanya slept. Um, that's good too. Uh, funny joke, our friend, Dr. Jonathan Metzl, who, jo who joins Woke AF regularly, he said, you know what? I wanna know how many babies are going to have been made whose birth, <laughs> whose birth right, we can pinpoint down to yesterday. Um, and I said, yeah, you know, I'm here for it. I'm also a person that readily uses Twitter, so that's where I was. And I think that it's hilarious that there are people who don't have Twitter accounts. I'm like, where do you get your news? Have no idea. Um, or maybe you don't watch the news anymore, which then, good for you. All right, so folks, it's been a fuck shit of a week and it's only Wednesday. So on top of telling me what you were doing during the major blackout uh, for five hours yesterday, tell me how you were feeling. Guess what? We're about a handful of weeks until, you know, America defaults on all of its loans. Um, and Mitch McConnell is hell bent on allowing that to happen on October 18th. We also, you know, can't seem to pass the $3.5 trillion uh, infrastructure bill, which the media keeps referring to as a spending bill instead of saying what it is, which is an infrastructure bill, human infrastructure matched with, you know, building infrastructure to combat our 21st century climate change issues, which are costing America billions and billions of dollars each and every fire season and each and every hurricane season. You know, we just have apparently money to blow. Um, today, if you noticed or if you checked your 401k and God hopes that you did not, because the Dow Jones was tanking as uh, President Biden was speaking about the infrastructure bill and talking about the fact that guess what? There are only two people that are standing in his way and that is Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. You know, the two people that the rest of the nation didn't fucking elect and that the people of Arizona are kind of wondering why the fuck they have Kirsten Cinema, you know, the woman that has to be raced into uh, the bathroom, who hides from her constituents, but shows face for her donors. That's the kind of person that we are dealing with. You know, Kirsten Cinema, who doesn't want to sit down and talk to the media about her positions because she says that, you know, it's going to be happening behind closed doors, but her own constituents have no idea what the fuck she's doing. People, young people, DACA recipients who voted for her, who campaigned for her, can't get her to not, you know, ignore them and act like they don't matter. I want to know what exactly is making Kristen Cinema do her little, you know, turnabout. And what I keep saying and what nobody else in media seems to say is, why don't we check that bitch's bank accounts? And yes, I said bitch, because that is exactly how the fuck I'm feeling today. And I don't feel like being politically correct. And I don't feel like being my best feminist self. So I'm just going to be honest. I think that Kirsten Cinema is a selfish bitch. The same way that I think that Joe Manchin is a selfish bitch and a piece of crap. I think that they are putting their own pockets and their own fiefdoms in head of the American people. And so the question that I have is, with all of the forensic accountants, right, who are doubling down and trying to figure out 
you know, all the mess with the Pandora Papers and where, you know, Donald Trump has hid all his money and who he's been lying to. Why don't we have people that are readily on hand to investigate uh, the monetary, you know, makeup of our representatives? Why don't we know, right, how they're getting their money and where they are spending their money and who is giving them their money? Because we have this thing, um, and if you haven't worked on Capitol Hill or in and around, it's called Open Secrets, right? It's a place that you can go to right now, not right now because you're watching me, but on a different device, you can type in Open Secrets and you can figure out exactly how much money your member of Congress makes, how much money they pay their chief of staff, their communications director, so on and so forth. The purpose of Open Secrets is so that there is transparency, so that we know exactly how much our politicians are taking in. Well, here's the thing. We also know that they have one set, right, their actual income that they are making, but then they have a whole other fuzzy bucket of money, right? A fuzzy bucket of money, which is where their PAC money goes, political action committee, which is where their donors go, right? And we know that the Supreme Court, by virtue of, you know, Citizens United has made corporations people, and so they're able to give an unforeseen amount of money. So my question is, instead of us being shocked and trying to figure out where Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin stand, why don't we just figure out who their biggest donors are and then we know exactly where the fuck they stand. So for instance, we know that Joe Manchin receives millions of dollars from Big Coal. So that's why maybe, I'm just throwing it out there, he was uncomfortable with the climate change language that was in the infrastructure bill. You know, because he gets a large part of his money, his political action committee money from Big Coal. Maybe, just throwing it out there, we should look and do the same with Kirsten Cinema and see, you know, where are her biggest donors coming from? Is it Big Pharma? Is it Big Coal? Is it oil? Where is it? Because somebody, somebody has gotten a hold of her and Joe Manchin and has had a hold of them and are making sure that their little puppets are doing the dance. Because you see right now, while I love to talk about that no chin having, no lip looking Mitch McConnell, while I love to talk about him as being the piece of shit that he is, and hopefully at some point in time, you know, maybe uh, when the Statue of Liberty is tilted over, that at the bottom, you know, with her head decapitated and we're all, you know, running around in our tribes, that, you know, it'll say Mitch McConnell was here, you know, with a hatchet hatching away at our liberty. Like, here's the thing, is that I want to hang all the blame on this evil, evil man. But the reality is, is that, you know, Mitch McConnell puts all of his cards on the table. See, that's the beautiful thing, folks, about, um, about Republicans in general. Like, these newfangled, white supremacist, touting, you know, hood off type of Republicans, is that they are very honest. Right? Like they can't help themselves. Like Donald Trump has allowed them to release their true selves. And so it is not a secret that Mitch McConnell wants to make Joe Biden a one term president. As a matter of fact, he said that himself. It is not a secret, right, that Mitch McConnell is going to do everything to gum up the works, to make sure that we can't pass an infrastructure bill by just a simple 50 vote, right, that we're going to need the supermajority in order to do that, not because he gives a fuck, not because they're debating on whether or not the bill is robust enough or it's going to help enough people, because you see, that's what our democracy is supposed to be. It's supposed to be two different parties trying to figure out how best to move the country forward. Not one political party that is activating as a weapon, right, to destroy our democracy by any means necessary, and then another one that is doing their best to just, you know, not get hit. Because you see, Democrats don't function right now like warriors. They're not going to war with Republicans. If they are, they're using what? Water guns? When they're using what? AR-15s, I say all this to say, dear friends, that the blame is very easy to place. It is whether or not in 2022, when a lot of these motherfuckers are up for re-election, if we're gonna sit around and allow them to continue to hold their space in Congress. Now, to be clear, we have over 300 pieces of legislation that were enacted in order to make sure that your voice and your voice don't matter, right? So we know that to be true. But the reality is, is that 
At some point in time, we're going to have to overwhelm the system in the same way that apparently Facebook's tech team got overwhelmed. Mm. Conveniently, right after a 60 Minutes interview blows up their entire operation and we know that Mark Zuckerberg actually is Dr. Evil. I digress. Um, the reality, folks, is that we as a nation are running out of time. We, the people, are running out of time. And if we continue to put all of our trust in people who continue to show their hand, then who is the dummy? Is it them or is it us? Because I'm beginning to think that, you see, we have all the information that we need. Do you think that, did you need, let me ask you this. Did you all need to know that Mark Zuckerberg was making money off of hate? Did you need actual empirical evidence to tell you that? Or was that just obvious to the rest of us? No, tell me in the comment section, because I wanna know if I'm the only one that was just like, oh, so what else is new here? But the fact is, is that, you know, criminals continue to get away with shit because we, right, we continue to say that we need evidence. Meanwhile, Republicans didn't need evidence to prove shit about Benghazi. They didn't need evidence to prove anything about Hillary Clinton's emails. All they needed was media spin. So I'm confused about why we have to be the most law-abiding citizens, and I'm not saying to break the law, but the reality is, what the fuck, right? Do you, did you need the evidence or can you use your eyes, right? If we all spend a majority of our time on social media platforms, right, and we have all now yardstick ourselves against our neighbors and our friends, are we measuring up? Do we have enough likes? Is my thigh gap big enough? Is my face small enough? Do my boobs look big enough? Is my ass big? Like all of these things. If we're doing that and some days we are exhausted by social media and we're fucking adults, what do you think that is happening to kids? Right? Like you did not need Francis Hagan to tell you what you already knew. I think it's nice, right? Because I'm hoping that with all of this overwhelming evidence and the fact that she is pretty much laying out an antitrust case, right, to break up Facebook is, Facebook's monopoly, that maybe we will get there. Because you see, Francis Hagan did the work that our Congress was too fucking lazy or f too fucking stupid to do. And I say stupid for a couple of reasons, right? Because what we know to be true is that these people love to get on television and be blowhards. They love to want to push back against Facebook. They love to want to look tough in the press and bring in a multi-billionaire and then wag their finger at him. But it's the same platform that they're using to raise their own money. It's the same platform that they're going back to to beg for to put money into their packs. So we're asking the people that are the beneficiaries of the billionaires to regulate them? Are we stupid? Right, like that, I, I don't understand how we got into this space, but that's the reality of what it is that we are doing. We're asking those that are seeing a bank robbery happen in broad daylight while stuffing their pockets to be the ones that then turn around and sit on the jury. How does that work, America? It doesn't, it doesn't work. It just allows for people like Mark Zuckerberg and the other multi-billionaires to know exactly how much money they need to spend and exactly how beaten up in the press they need to be in order for us then to turn the page and just go about our businesses and forget as everything has happened. Mark Zuckerberg put out the most bullshit statement that I had ever seen and said, oh my God, we could never, we care here at Facebook, our multi-billion dollar behemoth industry. Bitch, we saw your own internal reports. Like, this isn't some external group that did the reporting to show us that 15-year-olds and 17-year-old girls are developing eating disorders and that suicide is on an all-time high. It was your internal writing that did that. You are the ones that figured out a way to get child pornography off of your sites, but you can't do the same about white supremacy? Because white supremacy makes you fucking money and child pornography is frowned upon. Whereas you want to use white supremacy as a way to say what? We want to be able to tell both sides of the story and that we are grappling in 2021 with how we deal with, you know, white supremacist terrorists? The reason why, and this is a thing that I put up, and if you guys are lawyers here, if any of you are lawyers, answer this for me, because I put this out on Twitter, and I'm still waiting for folks to get back. So let's take a beat, right? Today, mind you, is the nine month anniversary of the insurrection. Today, nine months since the insurrection. Donald Trump, Mark Meadows, Trump Jr., 
uh, Halsley, uh, what, what, Giuliani, ain't none of them in jail. It's been nine months, right? The longest person sentence I think is serving what, four months? Four months in federal prison on some low grade charges for what, trespass, trespassing, right? As if, as if we didn't see the videos. Nonetheless, it's been nine months. But here's the thing that I want you guys to take from Frances Hagen's testimony. She testified to the fact that Facebook in after the 2016 election with the influx of misinformation to their platforms vis-a-vis -vis Putin and the gang, that they developed a civic Facebook group, a group that was supposed to look at, right, how different formulations and cells and white supremacist cells and white nationalist groups and hate groups were using their forms in order to activate their members. Well, after the 2020 election, they decided, well, job well done, we're finished. And now this has cost us a lot of money, you know, having morals and values. And so we've decided that we're gonna get rid of said group that was supposed to be our internal watchdog because we don't really need it anymore. I guess we'll just put those in place every two or every four years, or frankly, whenever anybody is paying attention. But you see, when they decided to dismantle the group after the election, so let's say that they did it at the end of November or the beginning of December, that left how many months between the election and the insurrection? Roughly about a month and a half to two months for people to be able to organize in broad daylight on their platforms in order to overthrow the government. So riddle me this. If we know that the civic Facebook group knowingly dismantled because you see hate groups and marinating in hate is better for the bottom line because the more fear and hate that people have the longer that they stay on their platforms. And so they knowingly break up this civic watchdog internal Facebook group so that then they can flip the algorithm switch and go back to marinating hate. And that helped to organize the insurrection. Can't they be held criminally liable? This is the question that I have. I am not a lawyer. I only play one on television, but this is the question that I have. If the documents do in fact indicate that this group knowingly was dismantled because it was more cost it was more cost beneficial to the folks at Facebook to have these hate groups activated then weren't they part of the way that people organized in order to overthrow the government and so then shouldn't they be held criminally liable that's the question that i have because it's been nine goddamn months and none of the people that are actually responsible for getting that crowd to Washington DC to whipping up the frenzy that would then turn into the stop the steal, which would then turn into the coup, right? None of those people are in fucking jail. Not the donors, not the organizers, not the former twice impeached disgraced president of the United States, not his fucking die having drip face uh, lawyer either, nobody. So according to uh, like America and our laws, like they, nobody did anything wrong. It was just a bunch of trespassers who got out of order. Facebook isn't responsible, Trump isn't responsible, nobody is responsible, and the people that shit in our democracy, in the halls of it, aren't responsible either. <sighs> when you put all of these pieces together, this puzzle, this jigsaw puzzle that we call America, then you realize that you just want to actually flip the fucking table over and just blow it all up. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you realize what is at the heart of everything that I just laid out? Money, capitalism, greed, right? Greed plus racism equals America. That's just it right? America was founded on commodifying bodies, right? Turning human beings into chattel in order to build industry. And Facebook has turned our own data into digitalized chattel as a way to sell, out, sell us, sell our information, sell our likeliness to the highest bidder. It is all for profit. 
and no one is going to do any type of regulating because we are asking the people who are the beneficiaries of said plan to stop it, which means that they would stop the inflow of cash into their own pockets. Are they doing that out of the goodness of their heart? I don't fucking think so. So here we are, folks. We have a Facebook world that we are all boxed into because for many of us, it's how you do you run your business, how you sell products, how you connect to people on the other side of the world. We have regulators who are pretty much mm, on average 72 years old that have to probably fucking Google what an algorithm is, let alone know how to regulate it. We have artificial intelligence that is being created with the eyes and mind of law enforcement, law enforcement who we can't even regulate to make sure that they stop killing black people, but we're gonna give them facial recognition software so that they can do it easier? Bitch. And then you wanna tell me that everything is okay and I should just relax, which is what people tell me most days? Are you insane? The only reason I don't run around New York City screaming my head off is because, you know, I like clean sheets in my apartment, right? I don't wanna be picked up and scooped away, but it's only a matter of time before all of us start to go batshit crazy because when you connect all of these dots together and you wonder why things aren't changing, it's money. You know, I said, and folks that listen to Woke AF, and if you don't, you should subscribe at patreon.com slash Woke AF for $5 a month. But if you listen to tomorrow's show, I said, I don't know if Wu-Tang Clan knew how prolific they were when they said that cash rules everything around me, right? Because that's where we are. If they can't commodify you, you are worthless to them. Do you understand that? The reason why, we are fighting like tooth and nail for our votes to matter because it is our last, our last fail safe against a full kleptocracy, right? Like we are looking at a hybrid model of the two worst kinds of governments that America is trending in the direction of. A kleptocracy, right? And authoritarianism. That is where we are headed, where everything will be privatized. And if you can't afford right? Your own safety, your own health care, your own police, your own this, that, and the other thing. Let me not spoil the ending for you, but please do read Octavia Butler's Parable of the Sower and Parable of the Talents, because it pretty much, you know, it's sci-fi that she wrote in 1993, but like I say all the time, she pretty much laid out our current position right the fuck now. We're not getting out of this without severe severe action. And when I say severe action, I'm kind of thinking that we don't have current members of political parties that have the stomach for the type of action that I'm saying that we need to take. Fiona Hill has a new book. If you remember Fiona Hill, she testified before Congress for Donald Trump's impeachment when she said that if you know anything about the moment that we're in right now, if you know anything, if you paid attention to Russia at all, America is following the same path to destruction, right? That is where we are. And everyone is turning a blind eye, but they're not turning a blind eye because the problem is just too big to solve. It's that the problem in and of itself is profitable. The problem sowing discord makes them more money. The more at each other's throats that we are, the more that we were on these devices trying to find our own tribes, trying to find like-minded people to be able to just agree with us, the more that we can create our own closed circuit universe, the more money that they can make. You see, there is no money in peace. There never has been. And these politicians and these CEOs of these tech companies have learned just that, how to commodify our fear and our pain. The only way out is through. And how we get through it is going to depend on all of us. Will things get bloodier before they get better? I have no fucking idea. But I'm telling you, if I'm looking at a magic eight ball, 
outcome doesn't look good. Um, you know, friends, it is, I gotta tell you, there are two things that I recommend that folks watch if you, uh, other than Squid Games, which apparently I am behind and going to watch uh, this weekend. Um, but two things that you should watch, two documentaries. Uh, one is um, uh, Coded Bias. Coded Bias is on Netflix right now. I think it's on Netflix, but Google it. Coded Bias talks about all the ways in which uh, algorithms are have you have another another one um, which is uh, the documentary on how to become a tyrant yet another one those two are essentially where we are right now coded bias and how to become a tyrant watch those two and we can discuss it on next week's woke Wednesday that is it for me, dear friends. Thank you for bearing with me while I was late today. I appreciate each and every one of you. We will get through this somehow together. Take deep breaths, meditate, drink a little, smoke a little, do a little yoga, stretch a lot, um, because you're gonna need to create the space because everything that is around us right now feels crazy. So you need to ground yourselves even more so. I appreciate you. Power to the people and to all the people power. Until next week. Peace.